1855 classification of Bordeaux created a famous tier of well-known chateaus that to this day make world-class wines for those who can afford them, which does not include me. Luckily, 97% of the rest of the wine produced in the region is made for everyday consumption and priced accordingly. We'll visit some small producers and a few great kitchens in today's episode. We're in Bordeaux, we're eating and drinking. So stay tuned. I'm Mike Colavecchio, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. In the first part of our trip, we ran into sommelier Patrick Cappiello on the streets of Bordeaux. He was there to check out the crush, as were we. So I caught up with Patrick at one of his New York restaurants, Rebel, to get his take on the modern Bordeaux scene. The classified roasts and the, and the ones that were the most famous for the last 20, 30 years represent, I, I think it's like 2% of the complete production of in Bordeaux fit in that bandwidth. Let's talk about this other Bordeaux that, w the kind of wines that I, I buy and I drink at home all the time is like table wine. Yeah. That costs 15 to $25. We see more and more Bordeaux being available on the, on the, on the value end. They were table wines for people of, of Bordeaux and of Paris. So they weren't of interest to people here in this country. But now as, as people have become more aware that there's great value be found in wine, there's an opportunity for these wines to become um, more exposed and, and now are more sought after. And as a result, we, we're, we're really fortunate because now there's a huge amount of great value coming, streaming from Bordeaux into the U.S. and onto our tables and into our restaurants. Speaking to small family farmers, in Graves I met young winemaker Charlotte Molinari, who recently right. took over her family's vineyards at Chateau Pont de Brion. You know, there's three or four percent of the Grand Cru Classés that everybody thinks of as Bordeaux. And then there's these thousands of families like you that have been working plots of land for generations that are producing, what, what's your total production in bottles? Uh, 120,000. That's it, it's tiny, tiny, mm -mm. tiny. Yes, it's very small production. I am the fifth generation, worked in this property. And you guys do everything. You've got red, white, rosé, and even a dessert wine. Yes. It's crazy. It's difficult to find a, an exploitation with all the colors. And, but we love all of the colors, so we want to, to make uh, all this wine. The cellar. Yes, the white cellar. The white cellar. Yeah. And I must say, having been in a lot of cellars, this is like a cellar. This is small. This is like, this could be my cellar. This is Semillon. We can taste. We love the Semillon because it's very complex and very aromatic. Yeah, but at the same time, it's got more weight. It's fatter, it's rounder. Yes, it's very round yeah. when we blend with, uh, with the oak. We stir twice a week. Batonnage. You? Yes, me. Just come in here, pull the tops, get the thing in here, stir it around, yeah. talk to it, <laughs> put the thing back in. It's like, I mean, one year of constant, every two weeks, this little inspection, making the rounds. All right, so this is the red this cellar. Red. And you're doing mostly Cabernet Sauvignon, yes. then Merlot, and then Petit Verdot. And then Petit Verdot, 10% of 10%, Petit 10%, which seemed like a lot. But we love these grapes, and it's very spicy. Mm, I'm smiling. Got a lot of fruit already, right? It's been in oak, and yet the fruit's so forward. Yes, it's not too oaky. It's fruity and strong mm. and complex. And you didn't go 
to school for this. You've been learning in the field. Yes. This school, this is the school. This is a real school. So this mold, this fungus, grows on the grape and it actually puts little holes in the skin and we get water evaporating. Yes. And then we get this concentration of sugar because the less water you take out, the more sugar you have as a percentage naturally. And we have to choose this grape and not this grape. Grape by grape. Yes, grape by grape. Like so we have to cut, but uh, we have to be careful. Uh, just take this and after this and the other week we came back and... Like three passes, sometimes four passes. Yes, yes. It's super labor intensive. You're taking over, so this is a generational shift and also a gender shift, so you're going to be the female vigneron for the first time in the history of these, yes. of, of these vineyards. I'm not the wife of a vigneron, <laughs> I am the vigneron. You are the vigneron. We can see the hands. She, she yes. works. <laughs> so, Semillon Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. Two thirds of Semillon and one third of Sauvignon. That's really tasty. I mean, you feel a little bit of oak. It's got weight from the Semillon, it's got some weight for the oak, but mm -hmm. it's got great mineral finish. Super food wine. Thank you. Through many more generations of Molinari and Grau. Thank you. So we're smack in the middle of the city of Saint Amillon, which was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. It's beautiful here. The walls go back to the Roman times. These churches are old. It's being renovated. It's really historical. If you're passing through Bordeaux, you've got to come down here to see it. We're here to visit a couple of super talented young winemakers who were part of a new group of like eight or ten saint amillon kids who created this young wine group. What's the name of the group? Arôme de Jeunesse. In English that means? Yes, <laughs> so in English, so Arôme is, yes, a flavor. And de Jeunesse, um, young. We are grow together and we think about the, the same philosophy to make wine and to preserve the tradition and also to make a progress in our process of vinification. We wanted to make an association because we are young. We wanted to do something more uh, strong together. Fun. Fun. Mm -hmm. Because maybe our generation has to take risks. My vineyard is mostly Merlot, approximately 19%, with always a bit of Cabernet Franc. I am at the bottom of Saint-Emilion, so I have more sun, uh, old sand, with some clay right. and some gravel. So I think I'm going to make more Cabernet Franc because mm -hmm. with the uh, climate changing, mm -hmm. Cabernet Franc will give more freshness. When I harvest, I put my berries entire in our vat in and I put put refrigeration to freeze and to, um, to extract the color and the good aroma. It works uh, really nice. Mm -hmm. It makes a wine uh, more color, more fruity and more tannins. So it will be a wine who you can forget on your cellar or drink really close to the bottling. Salute. 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 The next generation of Bordelais. Yeah. Next, I met the super talented chef Jean-Luc Rocca, who's already earned two Michelin stars at the Relégan Chateau Cordillon Bage here in Poyac. He's a salt-of-the-earth kind of guy and the proud son of a furniture maker. He also won the prestigious Milieu Ouvrier de France back in 2007 when he was just in his 20s. It's really typical, uh, this area, to use uh, local products. And uh, it's really, really important for Bordeaux, for the city and uh, for all places around. Now, this recipe, it's surf and tough. It's local beef, above the bazas and oysters from Bassin Arcachon. First, I slice cover to do like a carpaccio. Now, the tartar. Mixing bowl. This in a bowl. Do the same with oysters, shop, the same size. Shallot. Very, very fine. Now, chives. Parsley. Parsley. Capers. For the capers, not too fine. I like to have a... Uh, Texture. Yeah. Dijon mustard. Mustard. Tabasco. Lemon juice, olive oil. Pepper. Sea salt. Mix everything. Now we do the, um, the mayonnaise. Okay. This is the mayonnaise, the French mayonnaise. Now, the mix I prepared just before. I think it's good and now we have the tartar sauce. The tartar in the middle. Next step, now I can do like, can a, roll like a sushi with the beef. Now, with one oyster, I do a tempura. So all-purpose flour, potato starch. Yeah, 
and 10% 10% of uh, baking powder. Baking powder. And now, just in the deep fryer, it's really, really crispy. And uh, the oyster, not overcooked, of course, just uh, warm inside. The tempura, capers, the herb salad, chervo, roquette, anette, fennel. We can finish with the rock. Now you have a really typical plate from this area. <laughs> herb, salad, sauce, and the crispy of uh, the oyster. Local products. Traditional recipe. Different variation on it. Bon appétit. This is super. It's one of inspiration. Super. In literature, you can talk about the Romans and post-Roman eras moving wine and beverages in oak. But the idea of aging wine in oak is pretty modern. Really the middle of the last century. I've never been to a cooperage before. I've never seen oak barrels made. So we've come to a great spot. Cooper de Nadalier, just outside of the city of Bordeaux. I'm with Stéphane Nadalier, fourth generation Cooperage business. Yes. You grew up in this business. Yes, I did. We have behind us acres and acres of staves, yes. aging, yeah. in the elements. Yeah. Rain, yeah. snow, all temperatures. Exactly. We cut the tree, we split it, and dry the wood, and seal it out here for two or three years. We buy our oak from the center of France and we only buy the trees that are replanted so nobody can just cut all the forest, you know. So to make sure that in 200 years I still myself find the trees, the good trees for, to make barrels. It's split wood, split oak. After two to three years outside, yeah. depending on the thickness, these staves come in, they go through that first machine and now what? makes mostly the angles so the barrel is round and makes this part larger than this right so the barrel this way would would be like this you know right so it goes in like this comes out like that these guys are making sure that they like what's coming out of of this grinder each row represents enough wood to make one perfect barrel that's what they're doing they're numbering their hand selecting them then they're going to move this card over where these guys continue the process. And then when the wood comes to here, this is where he decides he wants to cut the hole in the wood at the top of the cask where you're gonna actually pour the wine into. It's all trade that's been handed down. Somehow, this gentleman knows enough to think that's the piece of wood, that's the stave he wants to be the, at the top of the barrel where they drill the hole. So much of this work is done by human hands and human judgment. All the way along the line, everybody gets to make decisions. Exactly. Exactly. Tell me about this next step, because this is this is the beginning of the birth of the barrel. It is. So they take the staves, they put it in a, a large, medium, small, and the all barrel. All the way around. Yeah, all the way around. Bingo. He's done. Perfect. Now he's trying to get. Get them even. So the only way to bend wood is to heat it. Fire and water. Fire and water. So we can same bend. thing when they shape guitars, it's the same thing. Yeah. But there's something else going on here. You're toasting the inside of the barrel. Yes. We have light toast, medium toast, and heavy toast. It depends just for the type of wine you want to age in the barrel. So this is where the toasting takes place. The oak's been warmed up, it's been shaped. These are wood chips on the inside, and what they're doing is they're singeing the inside of the oak cask. So when the barrel comes out of the toasting room, to make sure all the aromas are inside the barrel, we put this on it. Yeah, smell this. It smells like a bakery. Croissant, like baguette. A baguette, it smells like a bakery yeah, exactly. oven. And, and what, what degree toast is this, light? This Maybe? is light. This is light. This is light toast. A white wine might go in this, a Chardonnay might go in this. Yeah, a white wine. How many facilities does your family have now and where? Here is the main facility. Two in uh, Charente, near Cognac. One in Marsanet, uh, in, in Burgundy. Burgundy. One in California, one in Australia, Chile. And we also have a sawmill in uh, Pennsylvania. That's crazy. So it's, it's a global product now. It is. So they filled it with water. Now they burn in the bunghole. Now they're gonna put air pressure into the water to see if it leaks. 
So that barrel's got water in it and air pressure, and we're going to spin it to see if there's a possible leak anywhere. And believe it or not, they get a percentage like 8 to 10 percent that leak. They have to get taken apart and rebuilt from scratch again. Once the barrel's leak-proof, it comes through this machine that sands it so it's completely smooth and completely clean on the outside. So it's a great family story. Four generations, it yeah. keeps going, and so much of this work, it's just done by hand. Each barrel and each stave has to be seen by somebody to make sure of the quality of the barrels. To four more generations. Yeah. <laughs> So we just drove an hour and a half from Bordeaux towards the Atlantic down the Guermont. The weather was nasty, the tide was going one way, the wind was the other, the boat was soaked. We're going to have lunch on an uninhabited island sitting between the left bank and the right bank. There's an event space here, and there's a staff and a chef, and they got some fish from the local waters, and we're going to meet the people that make this place happen. This island appeared during the Middle Age, and the name of the island is Patiras. This is the first island you met when you are coming from the sea. Patiras has a meaning in French. What is that? It means suffering. I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> so the name of this island is Suffering. You're the lighthouse keeper. You're here by yourself for six months? Yes, I am. By yourself? By myself. Like there's no other inhabitants on the island? No inhabitants, but <laughs> lots of visitors. <laughs> but sometimes there must be none. It must be crazy. Uh, no crazy, just quiet. This lighthouse that you're keeping is not an active lighthouse anymore. Uh, no more. Even to get like mail and food, you've got to get a boat and cross that nasty little channel. It's not always nasty. And I <laughs> love that even when it's nasty. <laughs> she loves it here. You studied ecology and you have a boat license. Some job came up and that was a description and you said, this is me and you showed up and it was like, <gasps> I want this one. <laughs> And I get it. Thanks for having us. <laughs> you have a gourd that's been roasted, sautéed, slightly caramelized, butter, a pinch of sugar. Bass has been sautéed, roasted in the oven. Just, just cooked. And we're going to go old school here with hollandaise sauce. And a little bit of lemon lozenges just cleaned out. Ah. Okay, so same fish on the right bank, it's called one thing on the left, another. Mullet. Mullet. It's just caught this morning. We see the fishing boat out there today. He's got a carpaccio, he's got fleur de sel. We're going to get a little olive oil and maybe a little lemon. And then this mixture here of fennel, capers, smoked herring. Mullet, which is America? It's like a junk fish. I don't know anybody who eats mullet in the States. We use it as bait. I mean, literally, fishermen chop it up with fish for something else with mullet on the hook. So that was mullet carpaccio. It was freaking good, man. So these little huts are called carrelet. These are typical Bordelais. They've been around forever. They, I mean, they look like they're going to fall down any minute, but they're just little weekend fishing huts where, like, mostly guys, I guess, would kind of get away from it all, come here, smoke cigars, drink wine, drop those nets, that's where the name comes from, drop those nets into the water and hopefully catch something, otherwise smoke cigars and drink wine. This is what families used to do for generations. There's the super simple huts, there's no plumbing, there's actually a little rustic kind of a bed in there, chest of drawers, that big net called the cavalier that they drop down to catch the fish, and families would just come and chill here on the weekend. It's not exactly a beach, but it's a beach. You're by the Gohan and <laughs> it's pretty simple and funky. We're going to come inland. We're going to set up a fire made out of pruned vine trimmings and cook some steak and something else and drink wine. We're in Bordeaux. We're eating and drinking. Bon, bon, bon. Toast. To Bordeaux. Old, new, and the future. On the far right bank, we'll visit Chateau de Lossac in Côte de Castillon. And guess what? Yep, another multi-generational small family grower winemaker. 
my family was making wine about 200 years now. 200 so, years? Yeah. Two centuries? Yeah. Let me see your hand for one second. This is great. I mean, this is winemaker, winemaker. <laughs> Talk about all of this grass, because it's really kind of overgrown by a lot of standards. There's a lot of stuff going on here besides vines. When it's raining during the harvest, you know, we don't want the water inside the grapes, because we want to control the ripeness of the grapes and the humidity inside. When you have the grass on the floor, the grass is drinking the water. Like a big sponge. Who is arriving on the floor. These grapes were just picked. This is Merlot. It was just picked today. This is a cement tank that's huge and you have to get the bottom up over the top. So what she's doing is pumping the juice from the bottom up over the top to stir it up. Instead of crushing the grapes, they've chosen to do the fermentation with whole grapes. They love the way it preserves the fruit, captures the fruit, kind of sends the wine in that direction. I try to have a well-balanced wine. And with this process, when you keep intact berries, uh, we have a very good result and we have this style of wine, you know, very balanced and very uh, elegant at the same time. It's classic vintage in Bordeaux. It's not famous like 2009 or 2010. Okay. It's more classic. Right off the bat, it's fresh. It's got fruit on the nose. It's beautiful in the mouth. It's got integrated tannins. It's just super, super good and just super food wine. Yeah. I mean, steak, potatoes, this. In America, this would be an $18, $20 bottle of wine, which is this great value. So again, Côte de Castillon, we're all the way on the eastern border of Bordeaux, and I think Americans when they just hear Bordeaux, they think, you know, I can't afford it, it's $300 a bottle, but there's 3% of the wine is that, the other 97% is just these really, really beautiful, delicious, elegant, simple wines from Vignon like you. 200 years history you know, on this plot of land, and you're, you know, not exactly organic, but pretty darn close in a place that that's not easy to do. So, congratulations, Sante, to 200 more years, and 200 after that. On the banks of the Dordogne, David Ciuzard produces a variety of wines, including Sauternes. You guys are small family farmers, but you're growing eight different varietals. You've got red, you've got white, you've got rosés, you've got sweet wines, you've got iterations of sweet wines. Unlike some vineyards where I've seen, it's one picking, it's one day, it's all gone. With you guys, you're gonna do a, a first day, Absolutely. Then you might wait four or five days, a second pass. Absolutely. Some vintages you might do over two weeks, seven passes. I remember in 2012, we did eight different hand pickings. We have to wait weeks and weeks due to a very specific terroir we, we have here in Sauternes, Barsac, uh, with the Siron, which is a very small river, which develops uh, very nice fogs right. on, on the morning. Yep. And then it helps the botanical trees to develop and concentrate the sugar. Semillon is very nice grapes to do certain because the skin is very, very adapted to the development of the botanical trees. So when the botanical trees begins to work, the grapes are beginning lower and lower in right. the city. So it's very important for us to wait, maximum weight, to, to have a very nice con concentration and then keeping also our natural acidity. Right, and fresh because you need that acid to balance, otherwise it's like putting sugar in your mouth. So these are the grapes we just saw being picked Absolutely. a half an hour ago. We don't need a maceration because the skin is already dry, very, very dry. 85% of the grapes are already rotted. And as you can see, the small part of the greens will help us to uh, wash the sugar on the skin of the very, very roti grapes. So from one vine, you're going to get a glass of wine, maybe? No. Not even? Half, half a glass. Half a glass of half wine a glass from maximum. one vine. Very low yield, so that's why we prefer to wait. And, uh, this is uh, the typicity of Sautern and Barsac. So the way this machine works, there are these two little plates that are moving very slowly, that are just crushing everything. And over the course of three hours, it'll be done. You'll have the complete extraction. The juice is coming. Looks like it's raining down there. As you can see, the color is more brown. It does to, to, it's a botrytis. We will separate this color to have a very nice gold color. It's grape juice. Really sweet, albeit. Very sweet already. But really sweet grape juice. So in this tank, we've got Sauternes fermenting. It's a very already gold pale. This is eight days. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you have this color. Absolutely. The first thing that comes out is grapefruit, grapefruit skin. Absolutely. Right off the top. And in mouse, it's, uh, it's very original. You, you will see it's quite amazing because you have bubbly, bubbly taste as it's in fermentation and a lot of sugar. Fruity, herbaceous, sweet. Sweet memories. Really, really good. This is like family farming. This is like old school, small, artisan. I mean, this is a kind of a glorified big garage. You've got some red wine here. I know you've got, other, I know you've got another aging facility for your barrique, but I mean, you guys are just hands-on, small, year by year. We prefer to do low quantities to do the best wine we can do with our own terroir to do the <laughs> most specific wine, especially in Barsac, which is a very specific terroir compared to, to the other village of Sauterne. It's a, it's a philosophy, it's a family philosophy. Six generations? Yeah. So this is my Grand Vin at La Pines. So I call it old vines. 50, 60, 70 year old vine. Pure semillion only and aged in new oak barrels during one year and a half. So of course, very low, low, low yield. Half a glass of wine per vine. It's like acacia honey, dried apricot, spice notes, maybe super ripe melon. It's like magic. So today, today I got to taste literally the juice from the initial crush. And then one week into fermentation. And then this baby comes together. Cheers. Cheers, man. Keep up the great work. The thing about Bordeaux is it's not that it's trendy again, it's, a, it's that it's been a standard forever. We are one of the driving factors of the economy of Bordeaux. We're one of the biggest consumers of Bordeaux in the world. And for us to never have realized that there was so much great value to be found, it's shocking to, to, to see that, that so much of this wine has gone unknown in, in, our, in our culture. <laughs> to that. <laughs> Cheers. Well, that was so much fun. I love visiting vineyards and passionate winemakers, and there's no better way to learn about a region and its food and wines than to see it and taste it firsthand. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.